Tell me about how you felt and how your family dealt with your depression. Well, uh, when I was much younger, uh, nobody really knew what to do or what it was. Um, and there was all kinds of guilt on the part of my parents, um, frustration, certainly, uh, desperation, um, until, and that was when I was, you know, in the, in the sixties, in the early sixties, until when I was about 19 years old, we, the phenomena of depression, especially in young adults had started to come to light and I got treated. Um, and ever since then, it's been a, a much different story. I mean, tell me a little bit about at the at the times where your depression was, you know, at its worst. How did you feel interacting with your family? Did you let them embrace you, love you, accept you in the ways that we've been talking about? Or were there challenges? You know, if you were able, if one was able, if I was able to take in anything um, that was supportive, loving, um, compassionate, the, the horror of depression is that you're void of thinking you're worthy of any of that. And you feel like a burden. Um, you feel that no one understands it. You feel guilty about that. You feel no one can help. And in fact, it's very difficult for them to help, especially if they themselves haven't been through it. So, um, you know, one of the things that I think families can do or loved ones can do that's really helpful is to read books by people who have had um, that particular mental illness or depression. Um, the William Siren book comes to mind. So you can really get inside the head of someone who can explain it from a perspective and how it feels and what it's like. Well, you know, obviously for you, you're a musician. Tell me how you used music to help express what you were feeling, what you were going through with your depression. Well, again, I have to say it's in hindsight, once I have had perspective and I've gotten a little better or a lot better, that I've been able to write about it. Um, what I want people to understand is that, I mean, I think there's this um, uh, notion that, um, you know, musicians, artists, whatever, suffer for their art and depression is part of that. But what I feel like people don't understand is that when you're in a severe clinical depression, you don't, you're not creative. You're not creative. I was not creative at all. There is no, um, there is no deep, uh, you know, introspection and, and, and then the, the necessary perception and inspiration to put that somewhere. Uh, you know, it's, it's, what did you mean by you were, were not creative then? I mean, what happened? You, you stopped writing music, you stopped performing. How did that manifest? I stopped taking a bath. I mean, you, you know, you, to get from the bed to the bathtub is sometimes an impossible feat. So, you know, with that alongside getting out to work, I've done it. I've had to go to work when I've been depressed, but it is... Um, well, depression is miserable. It's psychic pain. And um, you can push through things, but it's not living. So, I mean, how do you go from that state where you can't even take a bath to mm -hmm. being able to take the love that your family are trying to give you? I mean, what are their conversations? Explain how that unfolded for you. Well, as I said, I, I think one of the most helpful things to me, and it's part of the reason I, I wrote the book that I did and, and talked frankly about being depressed, is that when I heard from other people who had been depressed and who had hope for me, had their stories to share, and the fact that they had, had recovered or, or were in the process of recovering, uh, you know, that gave me hope. And when my family became educated about that kind of thing and could talk to me in those terms, and I felt that they, they had a perception of really what was possible. Because in my case, nothing was really possible until, um, you know, clinically and medically I had the right treatment. And that takes some patience.